I'm John Taylor. I'm based in Austin, Texas for AMD. I've worked for AMD for about 10 years. Uh, partnered with AMD, uh, consulted with AMD back in the original Athlon 64 and Opteron days. So my, my, um, my time with AMD goes all the way back to about 2002. Uh, first time I worked on AMD, worked on an AMD project, thought about launching Opteron and Athlon 64, I knew I was hooked. And this is how I wanted to spend my time. Uh, so I lead worldwide marketing for AMD. And um, it's a pretty incredible time to do that because what I see is a company that has in some ways gotten back to its roots with the focus on high performance x86 or high performance CPU computing that I think is doing the best work we've ever done in terms of graphics innovation, software innovation to support the graphics experience for gaming, for VR, for augmented reality. Um, and the way that we're putting all of that together, either as discrete CPU components and GPU components or in the form of an APU. Uh, maybe that's an APU powering a, a laptop or an all-in-one, or maybe it's an APU you know, in a custom configuration powering Sony PlayStation 4 Slims, PlayStation 4 Pros, Microsoft Xbox One S's, Microsoft Project Scorpio. So, you know, thinking about all those things happening at the company and then looking at 2017 and bringing Zen to market, bringing Vega to market, um, it's a pretty incredible time. It's probably never been a better time to be at AMD or to be following AMD, I could argue. Yeah, I think we're on our consistent track that we've spoke to in terms of you know, delivery of Zen, where you'll see it in market in early 2017. Uh, but that the ramp of the product to be ready to go into production in early 2017 with a cadence of uh, first desktop and then server with our you know 2p naples platform which we talked about in some detail back in august and then seeing it in other markets like in mobile and notebook sector all in 2017. I don't think it can be uh, overstated, the importance. I mean, many associate AMD first and foremost as a CPU company. And what we've shown to this point is that our engineering teams with the Zen Core have delivered on all of their commitments, all of the expectations of an increase of 40% in instruction per clock, uh, but also driving down uh, you know, the power needs. So looking at that performance per watt, major step forward architecting the processor cores for the new generation of workloads and then looking at how we productize that, you know, uh, ideally for server configurations for, you know, where the data center is going, where cloud computing is going, but then separately looking at how to productize that for the high end of the desktop market, uh, VR, gaming, workstation, content creation, but then also with the flexibility of the Zen Core design, the ability to go after much more premium, um, high performance, long battery life, uh, interesting, compelling mobile PC form factors. So at that level, I think what Zen represents is new market opportunities for AMD to um, go back into, in a, in a very strong and compelling way, into the data center where we have very low market share today, um, to go after the much more high performance desktop and workstation workloads where you don't see much AMD represent, representation today. And then similarly in, in mobile, um, that ability to go after more premium notebook designs or even going after you know, the even more rich array of fanless convertible two-in-one mobile design. So it's, you know, it's new markets with a whole new level of product performance and performance per watt competitiveness. Yeah, that's a great question. I think some of that will, will still to come as we roll the product out. Uh, I think we're pretty excited about what we'll be delivering, even with what we've shared to this point, with a platform with AM4 that is designed to be a platform that you can get into and that will have, you know, that you can commit to and that you can have a broad array of designs that will bring to bear on AM4. So some of the things I think if you talk about legacy or, you know, milestones with AMD, um, thinking about the enthusiast, thinking about the person who loves the desktop, what do they want to see in a desktop platform? So that's a bit of a, a return to the roots. And then delivering an eight core, 16 thread processor, with, which is one of the products that we've uh, described, which is a, a Summit Ridge CPU. 
Um, I think what we're showing already with uh, what we shared in August is delivering uh, what I think would be classified as very high-end desktop performance early in the process of bringing that product to market. Will there be some specific things that will be unique to AMD or complete differentiation or surprises? We'll, we'll have to stay tuned and, and see what we bring to market in a couple of months. Um, I think what you can expect from Summit Ridge is we're focused, so we'll, I'll start with Summit Ridge, I'm going to talk about some of the other form factors if you, if you want to follow up on that. Um, with Summit Ridge, we are targeting high-end gaming, or, you know, professional eSports style gaming where you are gaming and you're streaming and sort of the high end of that category of desktop performance, uh, high end demanding desktop content creation workloads and then you know, bringing a CPU that's really ready for the next generation of VR workloads as VR goes in many different uh, directions, but some of those will require even more from the CPU than what we see today. So that's what I think Summit Ridge is targeting out of the gate, sitting clearly above uh, what we're offering in terms of desktop CPUs today. Yeah, initially you'll see, so in 2017 we'll be focused on rolling Zen out across various markets. So first high-end desktop, then server, then mobile, and then what's reasonable to expect after that will be the um, permeation or you know sort of driving the Zen architecture into more and more price points within those categories. But we haven't set a specific timetable yet for when you would start to see you know Zen technology come down and down and into lower price points within those categories. I think the way we look at it, so there's 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 two important things to understand in that. Um, one is that where we are targeting in the desktop market actually is a very healthy, very strong part of the desktop market. Um, the, uh, where there's gaming, where you have you know, high-end content creation, with what VR and how VR has brought developers back to the PC in a way that we haven't seen uh, in, a, in a decade or so. And then it's just also being in a way uh, true to the people who have been the fans of AMD, loyal to AMD, realize what AMD has meant for the PC industry, for those who like to build their own PCs or you know, put a lot of thought into what goes into their PC components. We wanted to, to celebrate them, kind of reward them first. So putting the desktop CPU as number one on the priority list, followed pretty closely by then server and mobile. That was how we set that strategy. We didn't want the desktop enthusiasts to have to wait in line for it. Uh, I, well, what I think I can share is that we've already shown a two-piece server platform, Naples, and you know we talked about that the intent is to be able to bring that Zen-based uh, CPU technology into the workstation market. So I don't have anything specific to share in terms of enthusiast two-p platforms, uh, but workstation is definitely one of our targets for for Zen technology. Yeah, it's, um, I think there's more to be shared, more to come on how we'll talk about the 2P platform, where it's differentiated, where it's most targeted. Um, but it's, it's safe to say that we are focused on both mega data center, uh, cloud computing type implementations, as well as more traditional enterprise and business, and as well as high performance computing workloads. Uh, AMD has a very proud legacy in high performance computing. We, we power some of uh, the most important uh, research supercomputers in the world, some of the most energy efficient. So you'll hear more from us and specific details of differentiation and focus across cloud computing, across, you know, in the enterprise and then HPC as well cool. in, in, in the months ahead. Yeah.
I, I think we're incredibly proud of our role with, uh, with Apple and their, their wide use of, of Radeon graphics. Um, I don't have anything specific to share in terms of Apple's uh, plans around our CPU technology. I, I think it's just safe to say uh, we're really proud to have Apple as a, as a customer um, for our Radeon graphics today. Do you already have some design means? No, I'm not saying anything like that. Of course not, no. Uh, just happy to, to be where we are with Apple today. And, and you know, we're excited to think about the opportunity that our new CPU technology represents, whether you're talking about uh, an Apple or an HP or a Dell or a Lenovo or an Acer or an Asus. Um, I think per my, my comments a couple of moments ago, um, this big step up in CPU performance with great power efficiency and our unique ability to stitch that kind of IP together with leadership graphics IP, it's a pretty compelling value proposition that the OEMs are definitely taking a strong look at. Uh, so, in terms of pricing for that, those Summit Ridge CPUs, like the ones that we've we've demonstrated to this point, they clearly occupy a performance spectrum, um, as well as what will be a platform spectrum that's uh, clearly above where we are today with our FX and AM3 Plus platforms. So, yes, the the, the pricing will be. Uh, higher than what you see from FX and AM3 Plus today when you compare, when you combine Summit Ridge with an AM4 platform. But we'll share more details on you know, that pricing approach, pricing strategy as we get closer to launch. Um, I think, you know, we've said that our focus on high performance x86 means that at least in the short term or perhaps medium term, we're not focused on the, the smartphone handset market that goes with that. Uh, we do have a healthy semi-custom uh, semi business and interesting things do come in through the pipeline of semi-custom type opportunities for AMD. Um, Any chance to see? <laughs> well, um, yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Obviously, the semi-custom business is one that um, often deals with horizons of working with companies who are planning products that are two, three years or more out. So not, nothing new to share in terms of our strategy where we're focused more on high performance x86, uh, not focused on the handset market today. Uh, and in terms of um, uh, the automotive market and um, self-driving cars and machine learning. Obviously, um, we have all the core IP and core capabilities to compete in those markets and we're constantly evaluating, you know, what, what could it look like for AMD to, to make a, um, a stronger focus in a market such as automotive. AMD is re really doing well in Turkey, so do you have any message to uh, Turkish people who really follow AMD closely? Yeah, well, we, we, we love the market in Turkey. Uh, it's an exciting market. It represents tremendous opportunity for AMD. Um, we love the fact that you're, you know, as enthusiastic as you are about the PC. I'm a fan. I'm, I, I love the PC. I've been building my own PCs for uh, getting close to two decades now. So we celebrate the market in Turkey. I would love to get to come do this interview with you in Turkey at some point as part of the uh, rollout in 2017 that we can look forward to. It's good to hear that. So thank you, Jay, for your time. Yes, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. <laughs>